Sourdough, the new and improved version. So a couple of years ago, I made a video showing how I made my sourdough bread. This was near the beginning of all the COVID stuff and yeast was at a premium. So lots of people started making sourdough. My video was okay. It was good. It was fine, but it was just fine. Looking back on that previous video, I'm just not really satisfied with it because since that time, my sourdough making skills and techniques have changed and improved by actually quite a lot. I have a new approach now, almost foolproof at this point, and it makes consistent and delicious loaves. Is it perfect? No way, that would be boring, but it works, and I think it's now better than just fine. And here's how I do it. So let's get started. Here's a bowl and a scale, and I'm going to turn it on with the bowl on so that it turns to zero. And now I'm going to add 350 grams of bread flour. You can use any kind of combination of flour you, you like with rye, wheat, spelt, whatever you want. I'm just using white flour here because I like it the most and it's the easiest to find. Just make sure you use bread flour. So I'm going to start with 350 grams of bread flour. And to that, I'm going to add... Uh, it's generally between 7 and 10 grams of salt. I think I went with 8 here, just 8 grams of salt. You can see it on the scale once it focuses again. Yep, so about 8 grams of salt. I'm going to clear that off again and then just whisk and eat the salt into the flour just to kind of disperse it. You can see here I'm just whisk and eating the salt around in there. Then I'm going to use one of my favorite little tools in the kitchen, which is just basically a little plastic rice paddle um, to create a hole in the center. I don't know why I use that tool. I just like it, so I use it. Um, create a little well and add warm water, um, just a little bit warmer than room temperature. I'm going to add 250 grams of water. So you've got 350 grams of flour. 250 grams of water and between 7 and 10 grams of salt kosher salt I use there you go you can see 250 251 doesn't matter it's close enough now I'm going to take my starter and you'll be able to see how fluffy and frothy it is and I'm going to add about two-thirds of this into right on to the water and you'll see it float. That's very important. A floaty starter is very important. And then I'm going to kind of start to stir this in kind of gently at first just to help disperse the, the starter, the yeasty starter. And then you'll see I'm, I'm scraping the bowl and getting more and more aggressive as I'm stirring it. Most important thing here, obviously, is that you need to make sure that the autofocus on your camera goes completely out of whack so that all you see is an arm. Okay. Yeah. But you can see this dough now. I'm kind of just shaping it into a ball. Um, a shaggy dough, as they say. And then I'm going to cover this with a plate and just let it sit on the counter for 30 minutes. During these 30 minutes, it's an ideal time to refeed the starter. So here you'll see my scale in a little bowl. And I'll turn that on and I'm going to add 65 grams of flour. I usually use between 60 and 70 grams of flour, but you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter how much you use as long as it is equal uh, water and flour. So if I'm using 65 grams of white flour, a little bit more. There we go, a little bit more. Then I will use 65 grams of water. And so I'll just clear that off and add the water now. I add it kind of slowly because I just don't want to over, over add. But anyway, just make sure it's equal parts flour and water. So 
Yeah, that's good enough. And then just start mixing it up into a paste. A smooth paste, kind of as smooth as you can get it. A nice smooth paste. And after that, I scrape the sides and stuff. That's what that looks like initially. And then I'm going to add the rest of my starter, that one third that I held back from, from before. So here, just add the rest of that. It's all sticky and gloopy. I try to get all of it, but you know, it's too sticky. Doesn't matter. And then I'll stir that up again until it's fairly smooth. And you can see I'm kind of going to town on that. You, you do kind of have to do it aggressively because it's so sticky. So then I'm going to just use a fresh pint container. Um, a fresh, by fresh I mean clean, a clean pint container. And I'm just going to use the spatula to transfer that in in one big blop. There's a big blop of starter again. And then I'll use a rubber band to mark the level of it. That's helpful when you're wanting to see how much your starter has risen. Put the top on just one side. Leave enough of a mouth at the top to breathe. Like that. And then that goes back into the fridge, getting ready for next time. After 30 minutes time of just sitting there and hydrating, I'll take my rice paddle again and it'll be, it'll be kind of sticky, but that's okay. Um, but you can see that, that, that it has already started really hydrating. So you kind of want to do this strongly because it is so sticky. So I just kind of scrape the sides and from the bottom fold it over onto the top. It's hard to describe, but you see what I'm doing bottom to the top, and just kind of form that into a ball. Again, it's sticky, but, but that's okay. You got to just do it kind of strongly. Then I'm going to wet my hands with cold water, get them really, really wet. See, wet. That's wetness. And then pick up the dough ball, a little bit left over in there, and wrap it around my hand. And then start just turning the edges under itself to form a ball like that. Plop it back in the bowl. There we go. Cover it with a plate and let it sit for another 30 minutes. On this second one, you'll see that the dough has really started hydrating well now. I've got wet hands again, very wet and squishy. Pick up the dough and do the same thing. Just kind of stretch it out and wrap it around your hand like that. Rotate it and do the same thing the other way and then start folding the edges down into underneath the center to make another ball. You can really see how the elasticity is coming together now. Cover it and for another 30 minutes just wait. Now this third time, I think, is really the magic. Here, I've got wet hands again. I pick up the dough and already you can see it becoming elastic and smooth and delicious. The third, by the third time, it's really fun to work with. I'm just folding and rolling the dough again, just like before. And this time you can really start to see that surface being created. Put it back in the bowl, cover it up with a plate, and you know the drill, another 30 minutes. This fourth turning, you can really feel the lightness and springiness and less elasticity of the dough. I do the same thing. Wet hands, wrap it around, fold in the edges. But this, I'm starting to be more gentle with it this time. And you can really, really feel a difference in the dough. Not one bit of stickiness. Back in the bowl. Lovely. And then 30 more minutes.
Okay, this is the last one. This is the last time you fold it, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this one even more gently, but look at that. You can really see a nice surface on there, clean, nice, smooth surface, and you can't, you might not be able to tell, but the dough itself is so light and poofy, and it's really going to be a nice loaf. Just keep doing the same thing, turn it under, create a ball. You can see I'm being a little more gentle here. And then put it in there. And this is the last time we rest it. La la. So now here's where we start shaping and getting the dough ready for the final proofing. Here's a piece of parchment that I've cut out unevenly and pretty badly. Uh, just lay it on the counter and I'm going to squoosh some water, just spray some water over, over the surface of it. And then place this piece of parchment over a smaller bowl, just a little bit smaller bowl, like that, kind of try and center it as much as possible. Put that aside. Then I use just a little teeny bit of, of flour on my counter and kind of spread that out. Then I'm going to tip the dough out onto that floured surface. Look at that. Look at that loaf. Okay, just kind of gently turn it out onto the surface. And then really, again, gently, just kind of spread it out. Kind of spread it out like that a little bit. Kind of wiggle it and spread it out. And you can see here, I'm also trying to find the center of the frame <laughs> of the shot. So I'm trying to move it around. Anyway, just kind of, it doesn't work. That Just spread it out like that. There we go. And then kind of tug the edge Pull it out and fold it into the center. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Just pull and wrap it into the center. Roll it over. And then gently just move your hands like this and start to create some surface tension on that top. You can see a real smooth, nice surface tension on the top. And I just get it into a nice ball-like shape. Yay. And then take my other, my other little bowl and gently plop down the sourdough right in the center of that parchment and kind of flatten it out a little bit like that around the edges. And then I like to take a little bit of flour, just a little bit, and sprinkle it over the top. And then very, very gently just kind of smooth that around the top of it. Um, you're going to love the way this dough feels. It really feels lovely. So I'll do that, then put a plate on top and put it in the fridge overnight. Dene, done. The next morning, I've preheated my oven to about 450, 475 degrees and taken the dough right out of the fridge. That's just straight right out of the fridge, so it's cold. The oven has been preheated with a Dutch oven in there, so the Dutch oven itself is, is all nice and hot. This is a lawn that I got um, a couple of years ago that is used for scoring the bread. I don't really like it. I use it much anymore, so I just use these. Snip, snip. And I'm going to just snip, cut a, a straight line right around the center, right down the center of the dough. Again, I've preheated my oven for about 30 minutes and with the Dutch oven inside to about 450 degrees. So the oven and the Dutch oven are hot, hot, hot. And I'm just gonna take the lid off. It's very hot, be careful. And then I'm moving this so you can maybe see it a little bit better. And then take the dough, parchment and all, and just lay it into the Dutch oven like that. 
and then put the lid back on and make sure the lid is nice and nice and secure and tight. I kind of jiggle it around a little bit just to make sure that it's it's on correctly. That goes back into the oven and that's going to be in there for about 22 to 25 minutes. After about 22 to 25 minutes, take the lid off and look at that. You can see how that loaf has just grown and, and ballooned up. It goes back in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes. And there it is. There's the loaf all cooked and golden brown. You can leave it in it for longer and make it darker if you want, but I just like mine golden brown. So uh, I'll get that out of the way and put a wire rack down for cooling. And you just want to take that, you'll see, I'll, I'll take the parchment off, just floop, and give it a thump to hear the hollow sound. And just let it sit there, cool it down. It's important that, it, that you cool it down completely. You need to allow like about three hours or even overnight to let it cool down before you cut it. Otherwise, it'll lose a lot of moisture. Um, here you'll just see all those, you can tell it's high hydration dough because of all those little bubbles. So yeah, cool it down completely before you cut it. So it's been three hours, four actually, and there it is, just wanting to be cut. Let's, let's cut this thing open and see what we have. Every loaf's different, so it's like opening a present. And what do we have? What do we have? Whoa! There we go. That's very holy bread. Nice. High hydration all the way. That's what it's looking like. So I'm cutting it in quarters now to give another slice of view. Ooh, that looks good. So you can see better in focus here. It's so moist and springy and it bounces back. It's going to be chewy without being too heavy. Uh, I'm pleased with it. So that's my sourdough video, new and improved for 2023. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.